Welcome to the 33rd presentation of winners in the Lowell Thomas Travel Journalism Competition, conducted annually by the Society of American Travel Writers Foundation. Known as the world's foremost broadcaster, the late Lowell Thomas embraced new ways of telling a story. He produced the first travelogue and the first Cinerama documentary, and hosted the first television news broadcast. Following his pioneering footsteps, many of our winners have found new ways to tell a story. The first Lowell Thomas competition was in 1984. It had 15 categories, of which only one, radio TV scripts, was a non-print category. This year's competition has 24 categories in a wide variety of media, including blogs, websites, podcasts, audio travel broadcasts, and of course, print. 25 faculty members from the University of Missouri School of Journalism judged the competition. We thank them for their efforts in reviewing the 1,190 entries and also for their insightful remarks. On a screen, on a page, in a broadcast or podcast, all of the winning entries have one thing in common, the highest level of excellence. Travel writing gets no better than this. So now, let's see the awards for work published in 2016 and 2017. Our awards presentation begins with travel blogs. Honorable mention goes to SATW member Susan Portnoy for TheInsatiableTraveler.com. Bronze winner is Candace Rose Raritan for her blog, Moment Catchers, on CandaceRoseRaritan.com. Along with her beguiling drawings, Candace's blog offers sketching tips to enable her readers to slow down and see the world. SATW member Adam Groffman takes silver for TravelsofAdam.com. Hipsterish sites and scenes abound, and the section on LGBTQ travel is a refreshing and unique addition to this year's entry. The Gold Award goes to Curb Free with CoreyLee.com by SATW member Corey Woodward. This blog is a treasure of information on wheelchair accessible locales and attractions, inspiring every traveler to take off and try it all. In the category of travel journalism websites, Paula Froelich takes bronze for abroadabroad.com, a quirky and irreverent travel site. Silver belongs to roadsandkingdoms.com, Matt Golding, Nathan Thornburg, Kara Parks, Pauline Eiferman, and Alexa Van Sickle. The website combines smart editing and thoughtful reporting as it continues to surprise and delight its readers. For the second year, gold in this category goes to BBC.com Travel, with SATW member Ann Bannis as editor. Bypassing the usual roundups and top 10 lists, this outstanding website is comprehensive and thorough, presenting an eclectic mix of stories that reflect and serve its global reach. We now move on to the two book categories, guidebooks and travel books. The judges noted the extremely strong qualities of the entries in these categories. Bronze goes to Andy Steves for Andy Steves Europe, City Hopping on a Budget, Avalon Travel. Although this compact guide emphasizes stretching the travel dollar, there's no skimping on insider information on bars, cafes, and places to stay. Winning Silver is the National Geographic Books Editorial Staff's Guide to National Parks of the United States, 8th edition, National Geographic. Combining succinct information, stunning photography, and clean design, this one book is all a traveler needs to discover our national parks. Matthew B. Christensen wins gold for A Geek in China, Discovering the Land of Bullet Trains, Alibaba, and Dim Sum, from Tuttle Publishing. With bright, bite-sized design elements on all aspects of Chinese life, this engaging book gives travelers a crash course in understanding this complex culture. Winning honorable mention in the travel book category is Andrew Evans for The Black Penguin from the University of Wisconsin Press. Bronze goes to Matt Golding for Grape Olive Pig, Deep Travels Through Spain's Food Culture, Roads and Kingdoms, HarperCollins Publishers. 
the cultures and culinary traditions of distinct regions of Spain jump off the pages. James Campbell takes silver for braving it, a father, a daughter, and an unforgettable journey into the Alaskan wild. From Crown Publishers, crisp writing and highly emotional content offers gutsiness and empathy in this altogether memorable book. Winning gold is Zora O'Neill for All Strangers Are Kin, Adventures in Arabic and the Arab World, published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Zora's account of learning a difficult new language as she travels demonstrates her keen observations and her talent as a fine writing stylist. In the category of culinary related travel, the honorable mention award goes to Elliot Stein for the secret behind Italy's rarest pasta on bbc.com slash travel. Deborah Kamen takes bronze for In Israel, a new passion for Palestinian cuisine in the New York Times. While examining Arab cooking in Israel, Deborah explores the identity of a nation within a nation. Ruth Reichel wins silver for If Worse Comes to Worst in a Farm. Ruth's open-minded food-based explorations revealed Frankfurt as a large, small town, full of interesting corners, quirky legends, and warm, big-hearted people. The gold winner is Sarah Khan, eating bunny chow in Durban, in Savour. Sarah deftly uses the history of bunny chow to describe how Durban's Indian cuisine was shaped by apartheid and a massive but isolated Indian population in South Africa. In the category of short work on travel, honorable mention goes to SATW member Rosemary McClure for A Storied Sling, Singapore Always Surprises in the Los Angeles Times. SATW member Larry Blyberg wins bronze for Learn How to Drive in Winter Weather at this Colorado Driving School in the Dallas Morning News. The story balances service with entertainment. Winning silver is Diane Daniels' Amsterdam Restaurant takes food from wasted to tasted in the New York Times, providing succinct yet descriptive writing about a business with a conscience. Carrie Miller takes gold for How Instagram is Changing Travel in National Geographic Traveler. Contemporary, informative, and surprising, the story offers insight into photographs and their impact on tourism. Special Purpose Travel Awards begin with honorable mention going to Lee Ann Henyon for Dreams to Remember. Macon, Georgia has produced a lot of essential American music in the Washington Post magazine. Winning bronze is Ron Stodgehill in Charleston Comes to Terms with the Past in the New York Times. From 1862 to the present, Ron tells why tourists still love this beautiful city despite its complicated past. Silver goes to Wells Tower for no amount of traffic or Instagrammers or drunks can take the magic out of semi-wilderness in Outside. The author uses well-planted humor to describe his family's trip to the Smoky Mountains, where motorists are discovering what distant ruminants look like on a smartphone screen. Winner of the gold is Tony Perrotte for Viva la Revolución in Smithsonian Magazine. From the late 1950s to the present, the article underscores Castro's communist ideals without excluding Cuba's past and present struggles to define itself. Taking honorable mention in personal comment stories is Ava Holland for The Promise in Southwest, the magazine. Zora O'Neill takes bronze, her second award today, for You Would Have Loved Aleppo, an inside look at Syria published in USA Today. Scott Vogel wins silver for Houston Asia, Eustonia magazine. The article's storybook style makes it a fun and surprisingly effective story. Winning gold is Jacqueline Woodson for her moving story, When a Southern Town Broke My Heart, in the New York Times. Remembering the beauty and also the unspoken segregation in Greenville, South Carolina, Jacqueline describes how the town she loved morphed into a heartbreaking and complicated place. And now the Cultural Tourism Awards. Lee Ann Henyon wins her second award, bronze, for target lessons. In Japan, an archery quest leads to unexpected lessons in the Washington Post magazine. 
We can all relate to the passion in this article, said the judge. The winner of silver is Brian Mockenhaupt for the world's unlikeliest trail in Backpacker. This great read about Brian's hike through the West Bank is a lesson in the history, politics, and the culture of a troubled region. Gold belongs to SATW member Jad Davenport for Black Beauty in Coastal Living, a captivating and engrossing article that spins around a tattooed Polynesian pearl farmer and the black pearls that he loves. Environmental Tourism Awards begin with the honorable mention to James Card for In Michigan, a fight over the future of a fabled trout river in the New York Times. Rona Coble takes bronze for A Campsite Grows in Brooklyn, an entertaining narrative in National Parks Magazine about urban camping. Aaron Teasdale wins silver for The Problem with Wilderness, Mountain Magazine. This thoughtful article provides a wealth of insights on the rarely covered conflict between wilderness conservationists and mountain bikers. Taking gold is Joshua Hammer for The Most Dangerous Place on Earth to Be an Environmentalist in Outside, a thoroughly reported gripping account of the plight of environmentalists in Honduras. You will soon understand why the judges remark that the winners for service-oriented consumer work range from the comprehensive and classic to the totally unexpected. The bronze winner is How to Travel Better by the Virtuoso Life staff in Virtuoso Life. The judges praise this massive package for its abundance of tips and advice on anything travelers need and want, from a pre-trip checklist to buying art abroad. Silver goes to Jeremy Cronin for his sound and straightforward advice in 10 months, 45 national parks, 11 rules in the New York Times. The gold medal winner is Gina Zamet for her irreverent roadsandkingdoms.com article, A Very Comprehensive Guide to Getting Drunk at Disney World. From a pit stop for a Kahlua Spike coffee to tequila flights, Gina gives sound, hooch-based advice on counteracting crowds and frenzy. The judges praise this irreverent article as a great idea executed with flair and shoe leather research. In the travel news and investigative reporting category, Aaron Teasdale wins his second award this year with bronze for Wilderness Wars on nationalgeographic.com forward slash adventure. Aaron presents differing concepts regarding backcountry activities in parks and also gives the reader a feeling of the grandeur of these wild places. Taking silver is Jason Motlog for Skull on a Stake in Outside. This compelling narrative puts readers in the boat along with Jason as he joined the desperate journey of struggling immigrants through the world's most dangerous jungle. SATW member Karen Schwartz wins gold for recent incidents put a new focus on sexual assault on airplanes in the New York Times. Karen's article on this little heard about risk left the judges wondering how often such cases go unreported. The judges lauded winners in the adventure travel category for bringing humanity into their stories, introducing readers to the people who inhabit the locales. The writers were vulnerable, honest and open, and therefore created relatable stories, judges said. Leanne Henyon wins honorable mention, her third award in this presentation, for a kid's first journey in Ed Abbey's Utah in Backpacker. Bronze belongs to SATW member Dina Mishev for At the Grand Canyon, a cancer survivor rises to the challenge of a rim-to-rim-to-rim -to -rim -to -rim hike in the Washington Post, a story both celebratory and cathartic. Jessica Silber wins silver for Into the Congo in Wonderlust. This tale of searching for gorillas is visceral storytelling. Gold goes to Jennifer Kahn for Out of Range in Afar. An amazing sense of place, said the judges, exploring the history and people of the vast Lapland region of northern Sweden, Jennifer weaves a tale of our shared humanity. Moving on to the category of cruise travel, honorable mention goes to Brown and Dickey for Climb Aboard Ye Who Seek the Truth in Popular Mechanics. Porter Fox wins bronze for From Montreal to Minnesota by Inland Sea from the New York Times. 
In gritty prose, Porter depicts the good and the bad, carrying the reader along for the ride. Silver goes to Alyssa Schwartz for Life in the Slow Lane, in the Globe and Mail. The immersive writing brings readers on board Alyssa's Norwegian coastal cruise. Kim Brown Seeley wins gold for Slowly Up the Ganges, an Indian exploration in two acts in virtuoso life. Kim's attention to details of colors, sounds, and sights creates a strong sense of the Ganges. In the special packages category, the judges praise the alternative and inventive styles of coverage, saying they were a pleasure to read and difficult to judge. Bronze goes to the New York Times for The Underground Railroad, a special section, Monica Drake, travel editor. The expertly written articles gently go through the sludge of history and sentiment. The Los Angeles Times takes silver for celebrating our national parks. SATW member Catherine Hamm, travel editor, and Christopher Reynolds, Ann Harnigal, Thomas Kerwin, and Carolina Miranda. This package takes an unusual tack by reminding readers that while some parks celebrate majestic beauty, others, such as the Sand Creek Massacre site, open visions of painful reminders. In such honesty, beauty is found and does indeed matter. Winning its second gold award this year is bbc.com slash travel for the U.S. National Parks Turn 100, SATW member Ann Bannis, editor. The writers created a rich, wide, and deep package jammed with information and humor in articles offering reverence, respect, and responsibility. Compelling photography rules the photo illustration of travel category, with bronze going to SATW member Susan Portnoy for photographing Kazakh Mongolians and the importance of tea on the insatiabletraveler.com. Detailed close-ups give viewers an intimate look at this nomadic culture. Taking silver is Kevin Miyazaki for A Trip Back in Time in the New York Times. Kevin's photos give viewers the privilege of seeing a train from the inside while also offering vistas outward. Brad A. Johnson wins gold for his quick look, Mar Adentro, San Jose del Cabo, Mexico on bradajohnson.com forward slash blog. With a consistent approach to the color palette, perspective control, framing, and the time of day, Brad's images exude a high level of attention to detail. Next is the foreign travel category. An honorable mention goes to SATW member Jill Robinson for Strolling with Ghosts of Vietnam in the San Francisco Chronicle. Winning bronze is Frida Moon for You're a Brave Girl in Afar, a well-crafted tale in a first-person adventure with grit. The silver goes to Mickey Rapkin for Taipei in National Geographic Traveler. Well composed with superior selection in writing, this is a how-to for writing quick tips for short destination visits. The gold winner is Chris Collin for The Other Side in Afar, this transformative journey to the craggy coast of Ireland is beautifully written, showing the effect of the environment on the human spirit. SATW member Shelley Rivoli wins honorable mention in the U.S. slash Canada travel category for Swamp Buggy, a tale of family adventure in Big Cypress National Preserve on FamilyTravel411.com. Winning bronze is SATW member Don George for Feel the Burn in National Geographic Traveler. Sometimes the best travel writing takes us to places we'd rather not go, such as the Burning Man Festival, a desert party of 70,000. Peter Kuzjewinski wins silver for Guardians of a Vast Lake and a Refuge for Humanity in the New York Times. This is a deeply reported and entertainingly written examination of the lives and beliefs of the 503 Satutuin people who own and govern Great Bear Lake in the Northwest Territories. Chuck Thompson takes gold for Deliverance in Outside. Read this piece and hold on to your chair, advise the judges. This true story of a river rafting trip has tension, humor, and wonderment. 
Next, the category of Video Travel Broadcast. Honorable mention goes to Christine Van Blockland, Jesse Jung, and David Zelski for King Longshank's Iron Ring of Castles in Wales on Curious Traveler slash Public Broadcasting System. Paula Frolic wins bronze, her second award today, for Rhino Poaching South Africa, abroadabroad.com. Far removed from typical travel videos, this provides a stark reality of rhino poaching. Silver goes to T. Sean Herbert, Barry Peterson, David A. Bagat, Rand L. Morrison, and Jason Saka. For CBS Sunday Morning, Forbidden Kingdom, CBS Sunday Morning. This entry is a nuanced look at the Kingdom of Bhutan. Liz Carlson wins gold for Svalbard when a book inspires a journey on youngadventurous.com. Gorgeous video and a charismatic host make Liz's video broadcast a standout. In the audio travel broadcast category, honorable mention goes to SATW members Paul Lasley and Elizabeth Harriman for Memorable Travel Through the Eyes of Our Military, Part 2, for On Travel Media. Winning bronze is Thomas Wilmer for his Alcatraz Island NPS series, a national public radio podcast based on fantastic conversations with a great mix of characters sharing the prison story. Rebecca Nolan takes silver for From Mine Closure to Reinvention, a story of Bell Island, Newfoundland. A compelling piece with very strong writing and production for NPR KCBX Journeys of Discovery with Tom Wilmer. The Gold Award goes to David Hansen, calling home for the Dirtbag Diaries. Praise for expert use of the audio medium, this terrific first-person narrative meanders through a description of several national parks, weaving in the experience and importance of travel. For travel coverage in magazines that are not specifically travel-oriented, honorable mention goes to Midwest Living, Trevor Mears, Editorial Content Director. Bronze belongs to Outside, Christopher Keyes, Editor. Wherever these writers go, we want to go with them. National Parks, Rona Marech, Editor-in-Chief, takes silver. The editors obviously value good writing and good storytellers. Gold goes to Coastal Living, Steele Thomas Marco, Editor. Travel content in the magazine and on its website is highly serviceable. Its well-designed pages are visual and varied, and the writing is breezy and personable. The photography is bright, the subjects engaging. In the category of travel magazines, honorable mention goes to Air Canada En Route, Jean-Francois Legare, Editor-in-Chief. National Geographic traveler George W. Stone, Editor-in-Chief, takes bronze. Each issue unifies science, great images, and adventure with lively consumer magazine sensibility. Via Anne McSilver, Editor-in-Chief, Win Silver. Via's thoughtful, well-written, and well-designed style belies the magazine's age of 100 years. Winning gold is Southbound, with SATW member Kevin Benefield as Editor-in-Chief. Creative editing and design and high-quality writing combine to make good reading on every page. Articles entertain, inform, and often surprise the readers. In the newspaper travel coverage category, honorable mention goes to the Star Tribune, Minneapolis, Carrie Westenberg, travel editor. Bronze is presented to the San Francisco Chronicle, SATW member Spud Hilton, travel editor. There's never a dull moment as the Chronicle's travel sections take readers to a depth of locations. The Washington Post, Nicole Arthur, travel editor, wins silver. This expertly conceived and edited section offers personality, information, and entertainment. The Gold Award goes to the New York Times' Monica Drake, Travel Editor. Praise for the variety of topics and styles, the New York Times travel section's informative and entertaining stories include diverse elements, from explanatory graphics to compelling narratives. Whatever the approach, the work is of high quality. The SATW Foundation is now proud to present 
the four finalists in the 2017 competition for the prestigious title, Travel Journalist of the Year. Paula Froelich's honorable mention in this category is her third award today. Through her website, abroadabroad.com, Paula tackles adventures around the world. From engagingly advocating to see Japan before it is too late, to offering a clever, paranoid guide to solo traveling, she covers a lot of territory. Winning bronze is Carrie Westenberg, travel editor for the Star Tribune in Minneapolis. Carrie's travel accounts are anything but predictable, and that is their strength. From her critique of Delta's boarding music to the engaging details of the sounds, colors, and textures of Mayan ruins, she uncovers rich material and presents it with precision and clarity. This is superb reporting, great judgment, and elegant writing. The silver winner is Mark Sundin, freelance writer and author. Mark Sundin is, above all, a reporter. His book, The Unsettlers, is a deeply reported examination of three couples' searches for the simpler life. His coverage of the pipeline protest at Standing Rock, North Dakota, is thoughtful and hard-edged. He covers an impressive array of subjects with good reporting as the common element. The judges observed that like classic short stories, many of this year's entries built tension and suspense that culminated in resolution. This said, one of the judges is great storytelling at its best. And the gold winner of the 2017 Travel Journalist of the Year is indeed a storyteller in print, through photos, in videos. Congratulations to Christopher Reynolds, travel writer for the Los Angeles Times. The judges praise Chris's original voice, his eye for offbeat details, and the wide range of his engaging, inspiring, and exceedingly entertaining stories. His pieces are refreshingly unconventional, authoritative, and smart. In short, his work is an enormous pleasure to read. His editor, Catherine Hamm, says, here's the difference between Chris and everyone else. He not only keeps ahead of the curve by telling stories in new ways, but he also strives to be the person who extends the hand that brings us together as people by encouraging us to try new places and see new things and meet new, strange, and wonderful people. Isn't that what it's supposed to be all about? Congratulations to Chris Reynolds and all the winners in the 2017 Lowell Thomas Travel Journalism Competition. The sustainability of this competition is supported by a generous contribution from our first gold level sponsor, Carnival Corporation, and its 10 brands, including Carnival Cruise Line, Princess, and Holland America. The SATW Foundation appreciates the contribution from Carnival and the donations made by so many SATW members in support of the Foundation's goal to recognize and reward outstanding travel journalism. We encourage you to enter next year's competition and we look forward to the announcement of the 2018 Lowell Thomas Travel Awards. When signing off, Lowell Thomas always said, so long until tomorrow. We say, so long, see you next year. <laughs>